those uh, events came up mm -hmm. uh, did it help you kind of get over those events mm -hmm. once and for all so those events uh, didn't weren't the real trauma for me uh, watching my friends go through things helping mm -hmm. people through stuff or mm -hmm. experience some of these things myself that wasn't the trauma I mean mm -hmm. I was I felt by then I was mature enough to handle whatever life was to throw at me what was really um, therapeutic for me in writing this book is realizing I have my my life in my own hands you know and I can make it whatever I want and, and I want to tell this story you know I want to tell this story and mm -hmm. I want to tell I want to not only entertain people but really show people what the this world is about mm -hmm. that's where the real therapy came they came in you know like that was where I felt like wow I can do I can change whatever I want with my own hands that's so, fantastic Dilika. yeah that was that was the best part for me uh, now we'll go to other best parts uh, of the book and of your uh, life in many sure. other ways, but we'll take this short. Boards ke liye to tayar hu, par tujhe chahiye Whisper Choice. Ye sarakta nahi aur deta hai daag se behtar suraksha, taaki tumhara dhyan sirf pariksha par ho, periods par nahi. एक रुपए का पैंटीन इसमें है प्रो वाइटमिन जो चोटी बनाए मोटी सिर्फ एक महीने में इतनी मोटी जीजू तुम नहीं तुम्हारी चोटी पैंटीन अब सिर्फ एक रुपए में डेढ़ सौ किलोमीटर के सामने जरूरत है तेज जवाब की खास कर जब सर्दी हो विक्स एक्शन 500 हंड्रेड एक्स्ट्रा ये दे सर्दी के पांच लक्षणों से जल्द आराम सर्दी में चैन की नींद के लिए विक्स वेपर अप विक्स वेपर अप सिर्फ पांच मिनट में सर्दी से राहत का एहसास शुरू सर्दी गायब बॉल से भी तेज नया पैंटी नेचर फ्यूजन जब बालों में हो बाउंस तो चाल सीधी कैसे रहे नया पैंटी नेचर फ्यूजन अब काशिया एक्सट्रैक्ट के साथ जो बालों को बनाए घने भरे और बाउंसी नया पैंटी नेचर फ्यूजन पी एन जी आई एम एक्सट्रीमली ऑनर एंड डिलाइटेड टू बी द पार्ट ऑफ द फोर्टी थर्ड इंटरनेशनल फिल्म फेस्टिवल ऑफ इंडिया विच ओपन इन गोवा ऑन ट्वेंटी एथ ऑफ नवम्बर दिस ईयर वेल This year we launch celebration of 100 years of Indian cinema Medefi and I'm deeply honored and happy to be associated with it. I invite all cinema lovers to come to Goa and enjoy the wonderful feast of Indian and international cinema that has been lined up for you. The 43rd International Film Festival of India 2012 will be held at Panaji Goa from 28th to 30th November 2012. Welcome back to uh, this segment of Ad Savere. We are talking to Tulika Mehrutra about her debut novel, Delhi Stopover. Tulika, uh, as part of your writing, mm -hmm. um, where would you place this novel in terms of what's being written in today's um, scenario, especially by young American Indians who are writing mm -hmm. uh, novels which are India-centric? One of the reasons I wrote the okay. book, um, I felt like there was a lot of beautiful literature out there, like the namesake. Mm -hmm. uh, which had won numerous awards, and it really dealt with the the sad parts of the immigrant experience and mm -hmm. how depressing it is, et cetera, et cetera. And then there were movies or films or other books that kind of fell in the whole um, slumdog millionaire kind of uh, kind of world. And so I it it. <laughs> I didn't want to write chiclet. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to write something of substance, but yes. that really exposed what the real India is nowadays. I mean, New Delhi and Bombay are so uh, advanced, and mm -hmm. they're so much further than than New York or Chicago or LA. 
Um, so I think in the place that it fits best is probably commercial fiction as it is, but I feel like this book is is a part of the trend of evolution, mm -hmm. where it's going into much deeper stories, darker stories, um, issues that that people are dealing with, and and finally showcasing them as opposed to, oh, I went to this party, I went to this, I went to that. <laughs> um, or the really heavy, depressing, sad stuff. Oh, or um, even even books of, uh, on nostalgia because yeah. that is the impression we have about the NRI, that they live in this, uh, uh, in this India mm -hmm. uh, which existed at the time when they left India. That's true. That is true. Uh, our parents took an India with them that mm -hmm. uh, they've maintained and that mm -hmm. image is still there. Mm -hmm. And when we go back to Lucknow, mm -hmm. that India is still there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not as if it's vanished. But I'm talking about the Bombays and the uh, the New Delhi's. And that's really evolved like anything, you know, and mm -hmm. so is Lucknow, but not to the to the extent. But I just don't think that mass um, the mass readers Mm -hmm. don't know a lot of what's happening and so it, it was really my goal not just to write an entertaining chiclety kind of novel mm -hmm. but to really take it further and show some of the truth of what's what's happening not in a scary way just in a ye hora and what are the books uh, or the novelists that you have read uh, over the years that sure. have um, impressed you and who you think um, you're probably following in their footsteps. Marion Keyes is one of my favorite authors. Okay. Um, I'm reading Rachel's Holiday right now, and uh, she writes about very serious issues. Mm -hmm. And yet, her books are hilarious. Mm -hmm. Hilarious. Yes. I mean, she writes about uh, depression and um, addiction and just very scary things. Mm -hmm. And yet, when you're reading it, you would think that you were reading some kind of satire on like kindergartners or something like that you know yes, I don't yes. I don't even know how to describe it but yes. her writing style is phenomenal I really hope that um, be like her and the my favorite book of all time that probably inspired me to start writing was Indu Sundaresan's 20th wife okay yeah right, that's yeah. my all-time favorite and yes. and since then but I've then again that's a different writing style totally altogether different. totally yes. that's uh, historical fiction hmm. which I I mean it requires so much research and I have such a short attention span hmm. that would just never happen I've read that book dozens of times now. Mm -hmm. Whenever I feel weird, I just go back and start mm -hmm. reading it again, and it, mm -hmm. it takes me to a comfortable place. But um, mm -hmm. she, that book was probably one that got me thinking that, you know, she transported me there. I have an opportunity to transport other people into, you know, the real life insanity of, mm -hmm. <laughs> of what is Delhi Fashion Week. So when you started the book, was it with the intention to get it published or uh, just leave it as a manuscript or a diary or something? So I think that anyone who even has the thought that they might be a writer would like an audience, yes. you know, they want people to read it. And mm -hmm. so even just having my little pizza and wine parties was uh, an audience of 10 maybe. Mm -hmm. It was nice. But yeah. the once I realized I had s something of substance, something that was very long, mm -hmm. uh, it was more than an essay, it was more than an article, um, I did want it to be a book. So it, it took that direction um, mm -hmm. from probably within a few months of the, okay. of the project. But from day one, when I started writing that first sentence that no longer exists, but that very, it wasn't a book at, that, at mm -hmm. that moment. And at what point did your journalism start? You've been writing for fashion magazines and yeah. interviewing celebrities. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when did that process start? So I think it was just very hard for me to do it simultaneously, just mm -hmm. because all my attention and focus was on the book. Uh, once it was more or less done, and it was in the editing part of things, that mm -hmm. was when uh, the fashion magazines actually reached out to me. It was when Elle reached out to me and said that we have a few um, ideas. Would you like to talk to us? And I said, are you kidding me? Of course <laughs> I would. So that was sort of the start of it. Before that, I had been writing in college. Uh, and after that, I was just busy uh, messing around in my career. This seems to break the myth because uh, people normally have this impression that you have to carry your articles and go from office to office and so many rejection slips and here you were, you were being invited to write. When I came to India, mm -hmm. I did go visit these editors and it was truly for my research to make sure that I was writing the correct thing. At the same time, I let mm -hmm. them know I'm, I'm also a writer mm -hmm. and would love to write for you. So that aspect was there, mm -hmm. but all my writing was you know, way too old for me to show them you know, the article I did on coffee and how it keeps people awake. Mm -hmm. That part I think was still there in a, in a sort of modified way. Uh, I had to introduce myself at some point that I'm a writer, please mm. think of me one day. Mm. <laughs> it was just serendipity or luck or mm. the universe or destiny, whatever. So did you start with L uh, and Vogue in India? Mm -hmm. or? Yes, okay. yes, L and Vogue in, in India. Uh, my latest article is out in Grazia right now as well and they've, okay. uh, it's my attempt at comedy mm. and apparently they liked it so oh, it's fantastic. in, uh, they've, they've featured me as a contributing writer as mm -hmm. well. So. 
And you've, you've interviewed some of um, yes. the celebrities from um, the Bombay fil film industry. Uh -huh. What was uh -huh. that experience like? It's awesome. They're okay. so great. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all artists, right? Whether yeah. we're writers or actors or performers. Uh, and they just wanted to talk about, you know, their projects, which is nice, and where they came from and what their mm -hmm. ideas were. And mm -hmm. it, it's just been really wonderful. And I've not just spoken with stars, but with directors and producers. And mm -hmm. I've spoken to everybody just to understand the evolution of the film industry as well, not just on the fashion side, but also on the media side. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's refreshing because we have an opinion of what, you know, this person or persona or this caricature is. And the truth is we're all just doing the best that we can, you know, mm -hmm. and it's really nice to see or meet or hear that person speak in their own words. So is that where the seeds for your second novel lie? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us something about it. So I will. Um, the initial uh, draft of the Delhi Stopover was actually a huge, huge book. Mm -hmm. It started in Delhi and it ended in uh, Bombay. It started in the uh, fashion industry. It ended in the film industry. And at some point, I had an epiphany that this is too much. This mm -hmm. is just not digestible, and it became two books. Okay. And so the second book, the seeds had already been planted mm -hmm. for that, but this was just much more, mm -hmm. uh, you know, material. And what do you call it? Crashing B-Town. That's too short an introduction for it to be a teaser. Tell us a little more. I can tell you the beginning of Delhi Stopover. She has a uh, performance degree from Northwestern and so her, her, her feeling is she really wants to be an actor. She mm -hmm. wants to be a thespian, a real one, not just for I want my picture on uh, billboards, etc. And so her first um, sort of experience with fame is through the fashion industry, but then she's given opportunities that she may or may not pursue mm -hmm. in uh, the film industry. And so the second book really dealt into what, um, what that is. This thing about coming back to India is um, kind of so important. Is that how you feel in real life? In absolutely, your life? Okay. absolutely. Um, growing up over there, uh, when I was um, a teenager, I really had no idea wh what, who I was. Am I American? Am I Indian? I didn't speak Hindi at the time. Uh, mm -hmm. That was something I picked up in college. Mm -hmm. um, the whole coming home thing was, was very important because I have black hair. I have, you know, tannish skin. I'm very clearly mm -hmm. Indian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yes, it, it was very important. And, and I love coming back and taking auto sometimes and just, you know, being here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's very much a part of... of but in your growing years in school mm -hmm. and then, of course, um, when you were studying in college, um, you're as American as you're Indian. So what were the American influences in your life in terms of what you read? Mm -hmm. um, who, were the, who were the authors that kind of transported you into another world or uh, became your little havens of escape? Sure. Who did you uh, read? Well, God, I'm embarrassed to say that I was, uh, I was not much of a reader after my... My, my teenage and college years, I somehow just stopped reading. Okay. Which um, happens to a lot of people because you are so busy uh, trying to find, find yourself. yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but until I was a teenager, I would read nonstop. I would mm -hmm. read books that were just way ahead of my uh, time from e even back then, Nancy Drew and, and those kinds. Of, I was reading those. Okay. Uh, there, was, uh, there was something, um, Sweet Valley High, I think it was called. I would read those. Those okay. were hilarious. Okay. Uh, I read the classics in mm -hmm. school, so mm -hmm. that was all happening. But in throughout my childhood, I was just reading everything. Mm -hmm. So there's never one thing that I was like, oh, I want to be like this person and whatever. Mm -hmm. I was always keeping a diary. So that's okay. been going on since I was five years old. Mm -hmm. So uh, I stopped reading for a while. It was really when I came back to reading. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had this thing. I would go to the library and close my eyes and run my hand through the, um, the bookshelves. And wherever my hand would stop, I would just pull it out. I wouldn't even look at it. And I would just take it. And I did that with a number of books and found mm -hmm. some real gems mm -hmm. that way, 20th Wife being one of them. Mm -hmm. um, but the American authors, I loved humor. Judy Bloom really okay. made me laugh. And what about um, authors who are your contemporaries? Uh, because Jhumpa and uh, Indu Sundaration are not mm -hmm. really your contemporaries. Right. Like maybe half a decade before you, five, seven right. years before right. you. But right. Of your contemporaries, are you reading? Have you read anyone? Or are you aware of, um, you know, who's writing what kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm following what um, my contemporaries are doing. The problem is that sometimes I don't have access to their work in the yes, U.S. Yes. So that's a little bit difficult. <laughs> no, but, but while you were in Manhattan or in L.A., have you been interacting with uh, some of the um, Indian writers there? Yes, definitely. And uh, they're doing amazing work. They're doing mm -hmm. absolutely amazing work. And I'm really sort of like, I hope they, it's great that I have them out there. And, yeah. and I hope yeah. that the, they're happy that I'm here too, because it yeah. keeps us all on our toes. Yeah, because Jumpa and all do live in, uh, in, yeah. Uh, yeah. in, um, in New York. Mm -hmm. So um, 
there would be that scope somewhere to meet yeah, and uh, absolutely I haven't met her yet but mm -hmm. uh, in in our day and age just reaching out is easy but mm -hmm. I appreciate that they're all there uh, I I find 